welcome to this service of worship and honor of the birthday of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the time when we celebrate his birth and invite him to be born in our hearts again. I'm Pastor Janet Helner Burris of the Christian Church of Wilkinsburg, and with me in this worship service are two soloists, Dr. William Banks and Minister Karen Arrington, our music director, Maya Petrovic, and our technicians, Ben and Steve Helner Burris. We're delighted that you are taking this time to honor the birth of Jesus by worshiping with us, not just watching this video, but worshiping with this video and giving praise to our God for the gift of his only begotten son. I hope that you have prepared your communion as you come into this service of worship, that you have printed off the bulletin so that you can sing. I hope you will sing the songs with us so that you will feel that you are in this worship service with us. And so let us come now and praise the Lord. But before we begin, we have some members of the congregation who would like to wish you a very Merry Christmas. So things are not normal this year, but from my family to yours, we're wishing you a great Christmas. And a happy new year. May you find the love, the peace, the joy, and the hope this season and next year. We love and miss you all. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas from the Coley family. Merry Christmas to our church family from the Griders. Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Merry Christmas to the Christian Church in Wilkinsburg. We're grateful for all the ways that you present the Christ child to the world. In many ways, Wilkinsburg is Bethlehem, as you make a place for Christ to be born anew in the world. God bless you, and Merry Christmas. Jesus, good 
to adore you, Lord Jesus. We come to praise you. We come to honor you. We come today to kneel before you and ask you to be born in our hearts again. O oh, come, O oh, come, Emmanuel. We need you. We need to be raised up. We need to be lifted up. We need your healing touch. Come, Emmanuel, be born in our hearts and in our world again. Help us now to honor your birth, even in these varied, changeable, difficult times. Help us to honor your birth and to invite you in to our hearts again. This we pray along with the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christmas has always been a time of lighting candles, and so we remember the meaning of each of our Advent candles now with these words from our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus says, I come that you may have life and have it abundantly. Remembering how our Lord promised us his peace. Jesus says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. He came down the Of joy. Jesus said, These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and your joy may be full. He came down that we might have joy. Hallelujah forevermore. Love. Remembering these words of our Lord Jesus Christ, love one another as I have loved you. He came down that we might have love. Hallelujah forevermore. And then the Christ.
Christ candle. Reminding ourselves that Jesus came to give us life. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, though they die, yet shall they live. He came down that we might have life. Hallelujah forevermore. Also, this evening we have lit the memorial candle. Remembering those we are missing this Christmas season. Those who have passed recently and those who have passed long ago. We always remember them at Christmas time. This evening we remember especially two of the senior clergy of our region, Reverend Ty Sabello and Reverend John Lyons, who passed recently of COVID-19, and our hearts go out to their families. We also remember Minister Sims' father, Deacon Arrington, who passed from COVID this summer. Many of you have lost loved ones to COVID-19, and this memorial candle also reminds us that we have lost over 300,000 Americans to this terrible pandemic. There are many tonight, there are many this day, grieving the loss of loved ones. And so we come now and offer these prayers before the Lord. Oh Lord Jesus, we thank you that you have come to give us the true gifts of Christmas, of hope and peace and joy and love. We thank you that even in the midst of these gloomy and dark days, both of winter and of pandemic, that we can receive a hope that's beyond the, what the world can give, a peace beyond anything that we can achieve on our own, a joy and a love that's beyond our own understanding. We thank you for these gifts of Christmas, for they are truly sustaining us, encouraging us, and strengthening us in these days of COVID-19. This night, Lord, we remember those who have crossed over into eternal life, we remember members of our families who have crossed over recently or long ago. They are truly in our hearts, and we can never forget them each Christmas tide. We also lift up our hearts in prayer for strength for the Sabella family and for the Lyons family, for the Arrington family the Davis family and so many others who have lost loved ones. Emmanuel, we ask for your healing touch on those who are now going through this disease, two members of our own congregation this last week, to Neil Reed, who is recovering at home, and Shirley Carter, who is at a rehab hospital. Lord, we pray for your healing touch to rest upon them. And we pray, Lord, that this disease will move swiftly through their bodies. Lord, in your mercy, be with both of them and give them your strength. We ask, dear Lord, that you would be with our congregation this night. As we cannot be together, we pray that we will still support one another and care for one another and feel that blessed tie that binds us to one another even when we can't be in this sanctuary together. And we ask, Lord, that even as we pray that we will continue to be connected to one another as a church family, that we will feel that blessed connection 
with Christians all over the world who are glorifying and praising your name this Christmas. We ask, dear Lord, that the body of Christ will be raised and lifted up in all of our respective services of worship. So come, Lord Jesus, come into our hearts and be born again. Raise us, lift us, strengthen us, heal us this Christmas. Come, Lord Jesus, come into our hearts and into our world again. In your precious name we pray. Amen. And so we go through the teachings and scriptures that are all a part of the Christmas story in this service of worship. We would normally do this the Sunday before Christmas Eve, but we made the decision that Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, this special service in honor of Christmas, that we would do a service of lessons and carols. And so we begin with the prophecy from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. I am reading from the World English Bible. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, and the government will be upon his shoulders. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there shall be no end on David's throne and on his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time on, even forever. The zeal of Yahweh of armies will perform this. And as we create our nativity scene this evening, we begin with the character that represents St. Francis. We begin with St. Francis because he was the one that started nativity scenes. Long time ago when Francis lived, people were illiterate and they could not read the Christmas story for themselves and the worship services were in Latin and they didn't know the story of Jesus birth and Francis loved the story of Jesus birth so he gathered the villagers together and he gave roles to each of them and had one person play Mary and another play Joseph and whoever the newborn was would play the baby Jesus and he established those, what we would call Christmas pageants, every year. And over time, woodcarvers started to carve the characters of the Christmas story, and that's where we get our nativity scene from. This evening, I have used different characters from different cultures and nationalities to help us remember that Jesus came to be the King of kings and Lord of lords of all the earth. And so our Francis comes to us from Africa, reminding us of the great gifts of the African people and all that they have given to our world. And so we welcome Francis to this table, even as we welcome Dr. Banks to sing for us a song that he has composed himself based on the prophecy of Isaiah. Oh, oh, oh. 
government will be on his shoulder. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there shall be no end on David's throne and on his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from that time on, even forever. The seal of Yahweh of armies will perform this. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, and the government will be on his shoulders. His name will be called a wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the end, free from his government and of peace, there shall be no end on David's throne and on his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from that time on, even forever. The seal of Yahweh of armies will perform this. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her.
In our nativity scene this evening, there is a character from Mexico, a Maria, if you will. She is here to remind us of the Virgin Mary in Scripture. The Virgin Mary would have been very young. She would have been 13, 14, or 15 years old, reminding us that many times it is young people who hear the word of Lord of the Lord better than we who are advanced in years. And Mary, despite being very young, trusts in what God is doing in her life. And remember what she said to the angel Gabriel. She said, here I am, a servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And so tonight, as we place Maria into the nativity scene, we do so with a prayer of gratitude for the gifts that people from Central and Latin America have given to us, all who speak Spanish as their native tongue. We remember them. And we also remember those families who are waiting at our border, who have escaped the guns and the gangs of their homes in Central America. We pray for them this evening, all who are gathered at the Mexican-United States border, and we pray for justice for them, for their safety, and for their peace.
In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph went up from Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to be delivered, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, for there was no room for them in the inn. Mary would never have made that journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem, an 80-mile journey without Joseph. Joseph is an essential character to the Christmas story. We might think of him as an essential worker. Joseph is always portrayed with a staff, which is curious because he was not a shepherd, he was a carpenter. But that staff reminds us that Joseph's ministry was to protect the baby Jesus. This evening, our Joseph reminds us of all of the African men who have been good fathers to their children. All of the men who do not get credit for being good fathers and daddies to all of their children. We remember them and honor them this evening, which is why we have placed an African-American Joseph in our nativity scene. In this time of growing unrest in terms of racial justice, we pray this evening for an end to racism and for every father to be able to raise their children in the way in which they can, in a way that will help them to love and care and cherish their children. Also in our nativity this evening is the baby Jesus. And he has a little light behind him this evening. He's made out of stained glass. And that light is to remind us that even though he's small and tiny, remember how tiny newborns are, that he is the light of the world. Would you sing with us now, Away in a Manger? Oh. 
there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, in the, on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. This evening in our nativity, we have two angels. One is from the Hopi Nation, reminding us of the gifts of First Nation people throughout the earth. The second one is from Indonesia, and she reminds us of the gifts of people from the Pacific Islands, the Far East, and Southeast Asia. Angels are essential to the Christmas story. Without the angels, Mary would not have known that she had been chosen to bring Jesus into the world. Without angels speaking to Joseph in a dream, he did not know that it was safe to take Mary as his wife. And without those angels, the shepherds would not have gone into Bethlehem that evening. Our shepherd this evening reminds us of all of the contributions of Caucasian Americans, those of European descent. Many of our Christmas songs and many of our Christmas traditions come from these European nations, and so we honor them this evening. This particular shepherd reminds us of the shepherds of Bethlehem. They were not only those who were tending the sheep, not just any sheep, but they were tending the sheep that would be sacrificed in the temple in Jerusalem for the forgiveness of the people's sins. So these sheep were very special. And isn't it interesting that these shepherds are the ones, the ones tending the sheep that are to be sacrificed for forgiveness. These are the ones who are told to go to Bethlehem and find the babe who will become the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. As we look at this shepherd, we also remember that they were homeless. And we offer a prayer for all who are homeless on our streets this winter season. Many of them are veterans, and so we say a prayer that our nation will put an end to homelessness and hunger once and for all.
Luke 2, 15 through 20. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word, The Magi visit the Messiah. After 
Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all the people of Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. When Herod called, Ma called the Magi secretly and found out from when the exact time the star had appeared, he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I may go to worship him too. After they had heard the king, they went on their way and the, the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. wise men this evening come to us from Jesus hometown of Bethlehem carved by Palestinian Christians out of olive wood these wise men remind us that Jesus homeland and indeed the city of Bethlehem is not a safe place that it is still ravaged by war. And so we want to pray for peace this evening in Jesus' homeland of Bethlehem in Israel. These wise men, according to scripture, were from the east. And yet, in some of our portrayals of the wise men, we will see that one of them will be dark-skinned. And this is in church tradition over the years, they wanted us to know that Jesus came for all people of all nations. And so they had one wise man come from the north, one from the east, and one from the south, from Africa. It is important for us to remember that these wise men were not Jews. They were Gentiles. And so they remind us that Jesus comes for all people of all races and all nations. Let us sing that beautiful song, Joy to the World Now. to the world. And wonders of his love. 
Let us pray. You are the word made flesh, Lord Jesus. So let your word now descend into our hearts that it might be born in us again and grow and mature and bear much fruit. We need your word, Lord Jesus. We need it. We need your word for the living of these days. In your name we pray. Amen. He rules the world with truth and grace and with the wonders of his love. That's what we want, right? We want the Lord Jesus to come again and rule our world with truth and grace and the wonders of his love. But beloved, he cannot come into this world and rule us with truth and grace and love if he is not granted access into each of our hearts. He must rule our hearts with truth and grace and love. I am wondering if he is ruling your heart this Christmas. Is he the one who rules your heart? Or is your heart being taken over by this pandemic? Is your heart being ruled by fear or stress or addiction? Is your heart being ruled by sadness and sorrow? Who is ruling your heart? What is ruling your heart this Christmas? Can you invite the Lord Jesus Christ to come back into your life back into your heart to rule your heart once again in truth, in grace, and in the wonders of his love. I confess that I have been experiencing a great deal of gloom these days of the COVID pandemic. There has been a growing darkness in my own Heart as I listen to the stories of those whose lives have been changed forever with the death of a loved one, with ill health for themselves, with unemployment, people who are hungry, people who are desperate. It is hard not to feel the gloom of this pandemic. I confess I have felt this gloom and it has weighed down my heart, sometimes with a negativity, sometimes with a cynicism, sometimes with despair and depression. And one morning when I rose to do my morning prayers, the Spirit led me to this passage from Isaiah chapter 9. Chapter 9, verse 1 reads, But there will be no gloom for those who were in anguish. No gloom. That is what Christmas does for us. It erases the gloom of living in this world, and it can raise us up out of the gloom of this pandemic. Verse 2 says that the people who walked in darkness, and don't we feel like we're walking through a great dark period right now? The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. And we come to discover that that light is a child, a child that has been born to us. Unto us a son is born, unto us a child is given, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And don't we need a Wonderful Counselor right now? Someone to guide us step by step. 
Don't we need to know that we worship a mighty God who still works miracles, who still finds a way where there is no way? Don't we need to know that our God is an ever-loving, everlasting Father who will never give up loving us and that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ as we have known it in Christ Jesus? Don't we need that Prince of Peace right now in our hearts and in the world? If you want the wonderful counselor in your heart, if you want the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, then listen to verse 7 of Isaiah's prophecy. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace. That's what we need. We need for his authority to grow continually in our lives. We need his authority to grow over our hearts, over the seed of our emotions. We need to give him authority over our minds, taking every thought captive to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. We need to give him authority over our bodies and over our health. We need to give him authority over our homes and over our livelihoods. We need to give him authority over our finances and gifts and talents. We need to give him authority over our church and our community and our nation. We need to give him authority if we want him to raise us up, if we want him to lift us up out of the gloom of COVID-19 to the glory of heaven where we can radiate with the Christmas gifts of hope and peace and joy and love and life. There is a way out of the gloom of this pandemic and it is by asking Jesus to be born in our hearts again this Christmas by allowing him to have authority continually every day, every moment of every day, in every circumstance, in every relationship, in every situation, to give him the authority to rule over our hearts. Every Christmas, we have an opportunity to give our hearts over to the Lord Jesus Christ again. Every Christmas, we have an opportunity to invite him to come and be our wonderful counselor, our mighty God, our everlasting Father, and our Prince of Peace. I urge you to give your heart to Jesus this Christmas, to open up your heart and allow him to have authority over your heart once again, that you might be raised along with me from the gloom of this pandemic to the glories of heaven, so that we might radiate in a world in desperate need his hope, his peace, his joy, and his love. One of the great Christmas prayers is in the fourth verse of that beautiful carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem. It says this, O holy child of Bethlehem, Descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. Let us sing together this carol as we pray this prayer for the holy child of Bethlehem to descend upon us, to be born in our hearts once again, to rule in our hearts, and to have authority over our lives once again.
And so I invite you to take the piece of bread you have prepared for communion as you celebrate our Lord's birth. And as you take this bread, I want you to remember all that he has given to you during this gloomy and dark time of COVID-19. Remember his strength. Remember his wisdom. Remember those moments of joy when your heart was lifted, maybe because a bird came to your windowsill or a child laughed on the street corner. Remember the gifts that he gives to us every day, the manna to sustain us through this difficult time. And remember how his body was broken for you. The babe in Bethlehem grew up, walked among us, taught us about God's love, forgave us, fed the hungry, went after the lost sheep, and then he went to the cross that we might have forgiveness of our sins and everlasting life. And so as you hold this bread, remember all that he has given to you the many blessings in your life, and especially the blessing that he is your Lord and Savior. He's your rock. He's your foundation. He is your anchor in this time of storm. And if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, right now invite him into your heart. Let him rule over your heart. Have authority over your life. And let us all invite him back into our hearts to rule in our hearts and to have authority over our lives. So on the night of his arrest, Jesus took the bread. After he blessed it, he broke it and gave to each of his disciples, saying, take and eat this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for the many ways you have sustained us through this difficult time. Help us to have the eyes to see and the ears to hear and the heart to feel the way you are with us as our Emmanuel, right here and right now. Bless this bread. Bless it as a reminder of how your body was broken for us on the cross. And that no matter how broken we feel this Christmas, you are with us and holding us. For you are our Emmanuel. In your name we pray. Amen. The bread of life for the people of God. The same way Jesus took the cup after the supper, saying this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of your sins. As often as you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. And so let us take a moment and look deeply into our cup and discern there the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ the blood that has never lost its power. And let us take a moment to confess our sins, to confess the darkness we have allowed into our hearts, the despair, the gloom, the stress and fear. Let us confess our sins, and as that great prayer says, invite him now to cast them out through his forgiving love. Let us be in a few moments 
of silent confession as we ask for his forgiveness. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin in each of our hearts. Grant us your peace that passes all human understanding. Lamb of God, you take away all the fear, all the hate, all the stress, all the gloom and despair. Lamb of God, take away the sin of our hearts and grant us your peace once again. For it is in your name that we receive the cup of forgiveness. Amen. For as often as we eat from the bread of life and drink from the cup of forgiveness, we proclaim the Lord's death and resurrection until he comes again. Maranatha, come, Lord Jesus, come into our hearts and into our world. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and that light was the light of the world. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not, cannot, and will never overcome it. Blessed are you who bear the light in unbearable times, who testify to its endurance amid the unendurable, who bear witness to its persistence when everything seems in shadow and grief. Blessed are you in whom the light lives, in whom the brightness blazes, your heart a chapel, an altar where in the deepest night can be seen the fire that shines forth in you in unaccountable faith, in stubborn hope, in love that illumines every 
broken thing it finds. Blessed are you who bear the light of Jesus Christ into a world in desperate need. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Let your light shine, saints. Silent night, holy night. All is calm, all is bright. So 